All right, so we've got a few parts to put on, and we have a couple coolers that aren't working right. First one's an ice cream machine. I found a temporary one on my truck, and I am getting it replaced right now. What a lot of people don't understand is on soft serve or soft serve ice cream, it's 40% uh, air. It's a thing called overrun. It's what makes your cone fluffy. This switch here turns the air pump off that actually adds air to the mix when uh, it's pumping it up. What we had was the switch was not turning it off and that can cause it to uh, blow the air hoses and things like that. Which I've got a couple tricks here because this is under pressure now. So I use that to lock down the hoses. So as you can see, the way this works is you've got this actual pump mechanism here on the center. That sucks the mix up out of this bag right here. Goes through there, pushes it through, up into the barrel. But at the same time, that little pump on the back is pumping up air and it's cramming it into here. Well, this could be under 25 pounds of pressure potentially. So to make sure we're not getting zapped with a crap load of mix, we're gonna clamp that off and uh, get that switch undone because otherwise that mix is gonna come flying back at us. There's a check valve there, but that check valve a lot of times doesn't work right. If it don't, then that mix gets all in your pump and that's a whole horrific mess. Because then you have to replace about everything in there. I tried cleaning it several times and it just never works out right. We'll go ahead and turn this thing back on and turn the pump on. Cylinders at 28, it's slowly dropping down. Looks about on target to me. So we're good on time. Now we got a couple coolers we got to look at. One's frozen up, the other one's probably been freezing up, so we got to find out what's going on with those. All right, so we already checked the belts, made sure the tension's right, double checked our motor protector there. In rush is only 23 amps, which I just had a motor not too long ago. Uh, later last week, uh, the start capacitor was going out. It would start, it would run, but my starting amperage was like 97 amps. It was a two horse, 230 volt motor but something to kind of look out for is your inrush if you got that on your meter it uh, kind of can tell you a lot without having to tear everything apart it kind of gives you some insight and of course you got to keep records of it to be useful information you can't just uh you know go off it purely but uh we've already kind of went through this machine last week so we're kind of done with this uh temperature's good ice cream tastes good we're good on that and let's go look at this other cooler. I've got a beverage air cooler here that's freezing up and I've got another one beside it that's freezing up. Kind of look inside there, you can't see it, but it's frozen. So we're gonna have to yank this panel off, take a look, melt it out. And we got this one over here, same thing. It's froze up. And you can see right there, that's plain as day. Icicle City. Then we gotta drag this thing out, see if we can get this thing melted out. Luckily they're not busy yet. Can't do much with it frozen up. Probably low on charge, plug condenser coil. Same crap as it always is. Looks like a fairly newer unit. Or if you wanna get water all over the place, you can do it with water. Whatever's convenient. 
power is off, otherwise you will know, short something out trying to do what I'm doing. Not that this is an instructional video for the freaking homeowners and business owners. This is for the guys that actually work on this crap every day. Look at that. Look at those cherries. Look at that. Look at that. It's nice. Nice, nice, nice. Go ahead and get that melted out of there. Mid. One of the things you got to watch out for, you can't use the torch if you got R290 or any type of flammables, and you also can't do it if you got electrical wires in there. And to be honest with you, this actually melts it a lot quicker than the torch does. And it makes a little bit of a mess, but you're going to melt water with the torch anyway, so it's just easier to do it with the uh, old sprayer. It's not bad. It gets it done. But like I said, we'll probably find a leak. I wouldn't be surprised in the evaporator and the condenser coil up on here and TU is plugged solid. Just because it's right beside the fryer, which is a horrible place for it, but it's the convenient place. And that's what happens. That looks a little bit better. We got all up inside there, all that accumulator, all that stuff. We're gonna blow it out real quick and uh, get this thing running. We'll see what we got going on. Might as well scan it for leaks while we got it apart, see that blow the water off of it. Could be a bad thermostat too though. I mean, it's hard to say. This coil looks in pretty good shape. The uh, whole cooler looks fairly newer. Could be they just leaving the doors open. Door seals are okay on it. And I'm not getting anything yet. May just be the thermostat. It's not cutting in, cutting out the way it should. It won't defrost so. Well, let's go ahead and check the charge, see where we're at on that. Probably have to tap it. Sure, it's not dirty. Nope, not at all. Defrost control. Oh, wow. It actually has a cheap freaking defrost from the on the back. Nice. All right, so that's unusual for him to have this kind of defrost clock, but you can see all the freaking grease and crap in it, which is a crappy spot to put that at. It just way it falls right into it. Condenser coils, yeah, quite a bit of crud on it. That's, that's lovely, lovely, lovely. I would not be surprised that clock is screwed. It turns freely. Unfortunately, there's probably no taps on this thing for me to just conveniently check it. Not horrible. Seen worse. I'll just wash it off with the sprayer. So we're at 10.30 right now. They're gonna be popping busy here in a second. We ain't got time to screw around with this. It's gonna be one of two things. Either the defrost clock, which didn't seem like it was sticking, is sticking, or we're a little bit low on refrigerant. Found the suction port, went ahead, recovered it, raised on a tap, because that's the way I like to do it, because they're more reliable than this clamp on junk. And then I uh, pulled a quick back on it, because we obviously didn't let nothing into the system. Now we're getting ready to recharge it. We're going to see how it's performing. If there's no problems with the cap tube, stuff like that, then we're going to uh, watch it for a week or a couple days, and we'll order the clock if we need the clock. So it's kind of one of the things there. It's going to be one or the other. This only holds six ounces, so you know it's not a humongous deal to uh, 
pull the charge and put it back in. It's just smarter that way, in my opinion. It's just easier. Everybody has their own way of doing it. That's the way I do it. It's starting to finally come down. I had a thermostat wire come unplugged. We're 22 pounds, which is about negative 11. This is a uh, freezer. That's why I was kind of confused there on the defrost clock being on it. This has been kind of a haphazard thing. I was supposed to be one piece of equipment. Next thing I know, I'm working on these two. Uh, we should have been here earlier, uh, but they didn't open up. So unfortunately, now we're in the way. Looks pretty traditional right here for a freezer. So there's a good chance it could be a defrost heater element that's not working right, or the clock's not working right. I completely was not looking and uh, not thinking, obviously. But uh, now that we know, caught that before we left, let's go ahead and check the defrost clock, make sure there's amperage on that heater. Limit switch came unplugged. Uh, limit switch could be bad. Could be the heater, probably the limit switch. All right, I've got my head up my butt because I'm freaking getting rushed and people's pissed because I'm in their way. The limit switch probably is open because the thing's perfectly warm. So we're gonna go ahead and start on this other one. And as it's freezing down, should do it a defrost. We'll just have to check it after that. Now we're working on this one. <laughs> this is my fault for not saying no. I did not know they had these other pieces of equipment. I guess I didn't look at my call slip, whatever the case. When you got this much stuff in a place where you can't just drag it off to the side or where they can just work around you, you need to just schedule it for later. We're gonna go ahead and tear into this thing. Pretty much the exact same thing of what we had on the other one. The same brand, same scenario. It's interesting that they're both freezing up, which kind of tells me that doors are probably getting left open. It's high humidity back here. It's probably freezing on there, but in theory, it should be able to melt it off. Now I screwed up on the other one, not checking it closer to the freezer. This thing's unplugged, obviously. It's back here in the back corner of the kitchen. And it's, uh, why I'm able to kind of freehandedly pull this thing out like I'm doing. Yeah, it's frozen up block wise. All right, something I noticed that drained I don't know, maybe it's draining, maybe it's not. That can cause us some ice issues. We finally got it melted out. You know, I wouldn't have wasted my time with the refrigerant level on the other one, but this one here, I can almost see right there on that top elbow, I can see oil stains. It sure looks more like refrigeration oil. Yeah, I kind of would not have jumped to the refrigerant on, as an issue on that freezer if I would have thought looked a little closer and seen that it was a freezer. Uh, generally, I mean, I'm just going off of, hello, it's cooler, shouldn't freeze up, thermostat controls that. If it ain't thermostat, then it's a uh, restriction or it's a, uh, a thermostat. Thermostat or refrigeration issue, it's gonna be, yeah, whatever. So, a little flustered. Look what we got. Looks like we got a couple of different leaks. I got to use hearing protection to be in here. So some of you are probably like, well, hey, you can probably tear that out there and solder that. And I probably could. But if it's eating through the solder joint there, you're telling me it's not eating through the copper somewhere else. We're just going to quote them to replace it. We're going to recharge it right now. But this is the reason why I ended up doing what I did to the freezer because I thought it was a cooler because of this right here. Nothing lasts anymore. Everybody made everything so efficient. They made the copper thin so they can get proper heat transfer so they can save energy. But we just wasted how much copper, how much energy to make that coil. This throwaway society is coming to bite us in the butt. Yeah, it's a pretty small leak, I believe. But I'm having a hard time seeing it. I thought originally it might be on that top one, but it does not appear, or did it seem to alarm in that vicinity. It almost seemed like it was one of the black ones down below. We'll let that set for a bit. Let's go ahead and get this one tapped, if it ain't already.
Yeah, this one's already had it all. It's been uh, tapped on the high side and tapped on the low side. That uh, is three eighths. I don't have any of these on my truck, so that's not me. Uh, hard to say whether, you know, this has been going on for a while or what. I have a feeling that it's been a leaker. It does not surprise me. Go ahead and clean her up and get her reduced. And uh, we'll see whether he wants to repair it, replace it, or what. It's been a little while, and it still is not showing up where that leak is at. I don't see... Well, there's a potential there on the back side. You can see it, I can't hardly tell because the glare, but potentially could be there. But like I said, this has been happening for a while. I have a feeling that this has been ignored. We uh, are tapped on the high side, obviously, so we won't be able to be truly accurate until we dump that high side back into the suction. But so far, so good. Got that coil completely blown out. Looks a lot better than what it did by far. So it's still a little bit there at the top, which we can do all that when we come back. They need their cooler back for their line. Went ahead and marked it so I won't have to wonder does it have a leak anymore. 72 in here and 82, 92, 102. So we're about 22 degrees or 32 degrees over ambient. We're on a 22 degree evaporator. And we are starting to come down pretty quickly in temperature. Let's see what we got here. 44. Just about to temperature. It's always great to see it leaking out like that. So we gotta tighten that up. Hopefully it's just loose. Still leaking. Still leaking. No more leaks, amazing. Still got an evaporator, it's leaking like a sieve, but you know, it's all good. Yeah, I dumped the rest of it in. That should bust back to the suction pressure we were at before. That's a lot cleaner than what it was before. All right, good as new. So run down to what all we've done, place the pressure switch on the ice cream machine. We put a tap on the freezer that we may not have needed. We're gonna order a new defrost clock for that. I am going to test the defrost heater here in a second to make sure that it kicks on now that it's down to temperature. I'm just going to put my amp uh, meter uh, adapter that goes on the plug into the wall, make sure it pulls amperage, and um, then we'll order that clock because I'm pretty sure that grease being in it probably didn't help it a whole lot. Everything else checked out fine. As long as I got amperage, it tells me that the limit switch is working and letting power through. It tells me that uh, the element works and the only thing left then is the clock. This thing here, it's leaking in the evaporator. It looks like it's happened before. I got it recharged, pulled the charge, weighed it back in. Good to go. It's a spec, everything's running, got it marked up. I went ahead and tested that defrost heater out with my little line splitter here. What I ended up finding was there was no amperage at all. I'm gonna order a new defrost limit and defrost clock. The clock because it has the grease in it. Limit because it's most likely what's dropping it out. The heater, generally I don't lose them very often. If it's cheap, I might go ahead and get it, but otherwise it's usually just the, the heater limit that uh, tends to go bad. They're still in their mad dash rust. I mean, we're 1250 area and it's a madhouse, which was just an absolute disaster, which is why I told them that we gotta start earlier next time. Otherwise, you know, this it just doesn't work out. Um, other than that, guys, if you enjoyed the video and you want to see more like it, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Check us out on Instagram and Facebook. And until next time, we'll catch you on the next one. Later.